Hey, so um, I'm going to do this video real quick, and I, I don't want anybody to take this in a way that I'm being vain or anything, but i just trying to have to say my point, because I keep hearing from friends, clients, that there's a couple mutual houses or ultra houses or Palero Monanzos that have decided this nice little PR campaign on me because it can't affect me with anything else. Um that they should just start talking shit. So, uh, here it goes. They, they, they brought up my age, and it's funny, I brought up some people, millennials, have brought up my age as a negative, and then, um, as in, I'm, like, old, and other people are saying I'm not old enough. So, I'm 34 years old, and I don't know what the big deal is. So, people are asking me, how am I... You know, I have all these initiations um, because I took the time to go through them and I paid for them and I raised money by myself through work and um, I'm an IT software developer and they get paid pretty well. Um, so there's your answer financially. Um, mentally, well, I'm smart. And it's not really been debate about that since uh, my IQ is in the uh, Mensa level. And uh, I skipped two grades in elementary school. And I went to, you know, college, started taking college classes at age 15. And I went to college when I just turned 17. And I have multiple degrees. Um, I have one in uh, BSBA and MIS, Management Information Systems, and I have another one in marketing. And then I went back to school later and studied art. And when I studied art, every class that I had, every piece of artwork that I made, that I learned how to do for the first time, was an art show. And I was booked for art shows for it. I'm a talented person. I learn things quickly and I pay attention, even when people think I'm not paying attention or um, talking shit. I'm always paying attention. Even when the ceremony is being done to me, I'm paying attention. Um, my first language is actually technically Spanish. Um, I was taught English, um, same time. Um, I took Spanish in high school. I took Mandarin in college. So speaking Yoruba being a tonal language is not really difficult for me. I spoke Portuguese when I was a child as well, and I'm still relearning that because my accent is not as good as it used to be. Um, but yeah, I can read and write in multiple languages, well, even without a translator. Um, sometimes I get rusty because most of my job, my work is in English or it's doing translation with software, with other things. Um, I'm an artist. Uh, multiple mediums and now that's all I mean one part I stayed in Montana for a while so I learned how to build a lot of different things from a traditional indigenous point of view as well as an African point of view how to make things from nature so all these different experiences between art and um, being pre-med in college and majoring in business and then um, just, you know, taking care of family at work and just all these different life uh, experiences, being in AmeriCorps, doing volunteer work, nonprofit, uh, working with indigenous people and impoverished people and etc. Like I've seen a lot of different walks of life and I've been exposed to a lot of different things. I've even been homeless myself. So, I mean, it's not like I haven't been around the block in terms of experiences, and that's where I kind of pull from whenever I do a reading, whenever I do um, anything, basically. Um, it's every experience I've had, good and bad, um, I use to help other people. Because even my bad experiences, some of my horrible experiences, the kind of saving grace is that I'm able to talk about it with people who probably wouldn't think I would. And hola. <laughs> um... And so, spiritually, um, I had problems with possession randomly when I was younger. Um, my parents used to say 
I slept walk, but I wasn't sleepwalking because my eyes were always open and I was having conversations, but I would mem- not remember anything. I started having blackouts in college, even for no reason. I would wake up, you know, and, you know, in my room and not know how I got there. Um, you know, just when I started actually going into um, African traditions, I was in the psychic community first. I was in the New Age, the Wicca community. I never wanted to do anything African. And then um, European white psychics basically kept reading me and telling me I needed to go into the African stuff because I kept seeing African spirits around me and they were talking and they are using words they didn't know. I didn't know what Orisha was. And, you know, basically that's why I don't ever sleep on white psychics because some of them are really, really, really good even if they don't know what they're talking about from an African ATR point of view, they can get the message through. And that's how partly how I got on this path. So when I got into that stuff, um, voodoo first, um, I had problems with possession again. And um, when I went to New Orleans, I had a couple instances where I started to get possessed in a store, um, Voodoo Authentica actually, twice. Um, because they have packets there and they have shrine, active shrines that they work there. So it's kind of normal. Um, it's also happened when I went to other Ongans and other places, Mambos, etc. So, you know, most, and then I was also, I was in Lukumi and yeah, I jumped houses. And, but, you know, I was scratched in Palo, I was scratched in two different lineages. Every time I'm scratched, every time I do a ceremony, every time I receive something, I'm paying attention. I'm listening to the words. I'm listening, looking what other people are doing. Even when I'm blindfolded, I I can still hear what's going on. Um, That is how I know what's being done. Um, I pay attention. I get totally immersed in the experience. And I I pay, and also I have spirits to talk to me. I have spirits to tell me what's going on. I have spirits to tell me, you know, things about people. It is what it is. I mean, that's it, hereditary. It runs in my family. So um, I don't know why people are making these accusations that, you know, I'm too young for certain things. It's like, I, I'm sorry. I'm smart. I'm sorry. I'm spiritual. There's your explanation. It's not vanity. It's just the fucking truth. It's just, it is what it is. I'm not going, I'm no longer going to apologize for being myself. I'm not going to apologize for being smart. I'm not going to apologize for being talented. I'm not going to apologize for being able to see through people. It's, I'm just not going to do it anymore. You, it's not vanity. It's just sheer honesty. It's living my truth. And if people got a problem with it, they need to work on their own shit and stop worrying about me. Um, that's basically what needs to happen. So, I mean, and it's funny, like, people are, like, of all the shit people have put me through, and tried to do to me. Now the only thing they're doing is like a um, negative PR campaign. I've heard the same bullshit and they use the same lines to everyone. I've heard multiple people and it's mostly coming from a certain um, um, radio uh, blog talk host, um, a couple of them um, camp and they're telling everybody in New York and they're telling everybody in Florida the same bullshit lines. And the funny thing is I've known these people. I've met these people. I've been in their house. I met the first wife, the second wife, the kids. I've spent holidays with them. So it's hilarious that they're talking all this shit like as if they don't know me. And I'm like, I knew your first apartment in Hialeah. I know your second place in West Palm Beach. Like, I know who initiated you. I know who taught you. I know who made your friend us. Like, are you, I, you guys act like you don't know me. Um, when I've been talking to you since over 2012 I've been your client so it's just stupid um oh here's the last thing um people say that um I it might be, no I'm gonna save that to another video it's shorter because that's a bigger topic so yeah I'm done I'm done talking about me and uh, I hope people don't take this in a vain way but you know I have to say what you know what I have to say in my story and 
I don't think I'm the best person. I'm always learning. I have like a huge library of books. I'm always asking questions. I'm always talking to different people and elders in the, the various traditions. I'm always trying to learn new wor- words. I'm horrible with Creole. Like I'm, it's like I'm still working on so many things. I'm working on my Portuguese. I'm working on learning more Yoruba. Um, it's, I don't know. It's like I'm honest about all my faults and I'm honest about what I'm good at but it's what what I'm good at that people have a problem with and I can't really help them I'm sorry I can't explain I had this problem with um a god brother he was telling me you know going over specific details of different things in tradition and, and it was very logical and I don't think that way I just do like when I hold an empaca, I immediately start seeing things. I don't have to blow smoke on the mirror. I don't have to spit on it. I don't have to do all this crazy stuff um, just to get things to work. Like, literally, I hold it, and I start seeing stuff. Like, or I go into a session, and I start, like, I've even gotten to the point where I'm reading that without anything. I'm not reading my chamalongos. I'm not reading my cards. I, as soon as I start the session, I go. And that's how I always read before. It's not initiation should not take things away from you. If you naturally have a gift, you, it should be heightened. It should be more developed. It should be enhanced. It shouldn't be, um, in, 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 like the, I don't know, it's encumbering. Like it's just, it's, it shouldn't inhibit you. You should be able to be that much better diviner because you have a new set of tools that you can use. So I don't really like this hate group I know who they are. I know why they hate me. Some of them, I don't know why they hate me. Some of them I never met in my life. Some I met and, you know, I wish I never met them. But it is what it is. You know, some people, you know, you got reasons to hate me. And, and, you know, I had reasons to hate you. So it's mutual. But, um, yeah. There's one bitch, this Yanni Fire. I should have left her ass in a fire in Haiti. That's what I should have done, but it is what it is. You know, you there's no good uh, good deed, uh, you know, um, unpunished because I found out who that person really was after I saved her ass. Like, literally pulled her ass out of a fire. Um, you know, you meet somebody and you think they're one person and then they're something else. So, it is what it is. And... I do not apologize for anything I've ever done. I don't apologize for anything that um, I've ever said because I always try to live my truth. I always try to say what I feel, even when I'm heated in, um, you know, passion or I'm angry. Those are my true feelings. Like I might be sorry how um, it, the delivery was. But those are my true feelings. And most of the things of what I say is not, you know, saying specific things that hurt people. It's how I really feel. It's it's because it takes a lot to get me angry. So it's like things that have been boiling over for, you know, a while that I just kept, you know, I just did not say. I did not say to either keep the friendship or keep the relationship. And, you know, I just get to a point where um, it, I can't take it anymore. It's like I've I've been used by so many people in this community. And then the fact that some of them are coming back and saying, I did something wrong to them. I did do something wrong to to you. I cut off the ATM. I cut off, you know, resources. I cut off my energy I was given to you. And I'm not sorry about it because you don't, you don't deserve my time. You don't deserve my energy. You don't deserve my money. You don't deserve me referring clients to you. And that's it. It is what it is. So if you're mad at me about that, get over and get and move on because I have. I'm worrying about myself. I'm worrying about my spiritual development. I'm worrying about who can I, uh, you know, enrich and better. And I do have lots of clients now or former clients who have their own shows. They have their own blogs. They have their own YouTubes. And they have their own websites. They have their own spiritual practices. No one ever talks about that. I mean, and they're all mostly women. That's the other thing. I, I get told I'm like, I don't like women for some reason when most of my clients are women. And I can name four of them who are now have their own spiritual practices. And my first teachers were women who also had their own spiritual practices. And they still do to, 
uh, you know, and radio shows today. So I don't get it. Um, I'm not, I'm not trying to get it. I, I don't care anymore. I just want to say, you know, my piece and move on because I'm just tired of hearing the dumb bullshit from friends. Like I'm hearing from friends that, you know, this person said this, this person, is, this person told you not, told me not to talk to you because of this. And I'm like, they already know this. Like the person who they're talking to already knows this. I tell everybody the good and the bad. And, you know, they see my tears and they see me like showing off. Like they've seen in another thing. Um, I'm not initiated apparently when I took pictures within ceremony, which you're not supposed to do. But the people who are, you know, telling my friends that, you know, he never initiated have seen me in initiation like Santo rooms. They have seen me getting scratched. They have seen the scratches. They have seen like my Arishas. They have seen my Ngangas. They have seen like my stuff in my Loa. They have seen stuff that I don't show anybody else that these people are going around. Oh, it never happened. So when they say they, I've, and I've literally posted receipts of payments to my initiators and stuff, emails, messages, and it's hilarious when people, and you know, the funniest thing, I had a friend's like, I've seen her receipts, and I'm like, she literally has. She's seen shit that shouldn't even be online. Yep. So, you know, people can keep lying, but you just expose who you really are because you're gossiping, and you're supposed to be a priest, and you're supposed to be diviners, and if you're a diviner, and you're a spiritualist, and you're, like, passing around incorrect information, what kind of diviner are you? You know? If you don't even know accurate information with gossip you throw out, how good are you with giving, you know, accurate information to clients in a session? Makes me wonder, doesn't it? So, yeah, talk to you later. Bye.